Hello, everybody. We are Suffren Robotics um, from the Suffren High School. Obviously, I know um, you're all here because you want to join the team or at least have an interest in it. So this little presentation here is basically us going to go over everything that um, we are and that we will be doing. So I think we should first um, introduce ourselves. So um, hi, I'm Jason, the captain of the team and the head designer. Hi, I'm Jordan. I'm head of documentation. I'm Noah Holland. I'm head of fabrication and machining. I'm Ron. I'm head of programming. Okay, so what is Suffern Robotics? So we're a high school robotics team, obviously, and we compete in First Tech Challenge, which is a bunch of um, challenges each year that varies, and we compete by scoring points, and we compete at the local, state, regional, and world level, and we've advanced to the world championships five times since we started competing. Yeah, so actually, um, just uh, last year in 2019, we actually were fortunate enough to advance to the world championships in um, Detroit. We were one of the two presented teams that um, was able to go there. And we actually were the finalists for the Connect Award, which basically is the team that does the best outreach around the community. Yes. So what we do as a team, so we each each season, um, we go through the process of brainstorming, documenting, designing, building, and programming an entirely new robot for each unique challenge. And we do every step of the process ourselves. So we don't rely on pre-built kits or anything. We make and program everything ourselves. Okay, so basically um, every year there's a new like uh, game that Welcome we have to, to the go first to. Tech um, so basically, it's like a new challenge. Like as you can see here, last this is last year's. Um, it was like a city themed. I mean, at the stack stuff, we'll show you like the whole video in like a second. And next year, all we know so far is that it's going to be sports themed. So we're kind of excited for that. Play the video. Challenge game for the 2019-2020 First Rise season: Skystone, presented by Qualcomm. A team consists of up to two driver operators a coach, a human player, and a robot. The robot must be built from materials specified in the game manual and fit within an 18-inch sizing tool, but may expand after the match begins. Each match is played with four randomly selected teams, two per alliance. Each alliance is allowed only one human player. Your opponents for one match may be your partners for another. The game is played on a 12-foot square playing field with a foam tile floor and one-foot high walls. Eight unique navigation targets are mounted on the field walls. Separating the landing zone from the building zone is the Sky Bridge, made up of two Alliance-specific bridges with 14 inches of clearance and a neutral bridge 20 inches high. Red and blue depots are taped off in the loading zone corners. Red and blue building sites are taped off in the building zone corners. Outside of the field walls are the Alliance stations and human player stations. The main game element is a stone, 4 by 8 and 5 inches tall. There are 56 stones in the game. In addition, there are four special sky stones, with a navigation target wrapped over one side. During gameplay, Stones are assembled onto Alliance-specific foundations. These are placed in the center of the building zone, but can be moved by robots during gameplay. Each team can design and build a special capstone, which may be used to score additional points. Before each match, teams place their robots on the field, touching the wall closest to their Alliance station. 24 stones are stacked next to each human player station and 12 more stones are placed on the field, including four randomly located sky stones. Each team may preload one capstone onto their robot, or the human player may introduce it later in the game. Each match begins with a 30 second autonomous period. During this period, there are a number of ways for teams to score using only pre-programmed instructions and sensor inputs. Repositioning a foundation to the building site will earn 10 points for the Alliance. 
An alliance earns two points for each stone delivered to the building zone. Both the robot and stone must be completely in the building zone. A sky stone moved into the building zone earns 10 points, only if it is the first or second sky stone delivered. After that, sky stones are worth only two points. If a robot can park over the midfield tape, it will earn five points. And finally, each stone placed in the foundation earns two points. Following the autonomous period is the two-minute driver-controlled period. There are a number of ways to score points. Each stone delivered completely through an alliance's bridge earns one point. However, a stone delivered through the neutral bridge does not earn any points. Each stone placed on the foundation earns one point. The last 30 seconds of the driver controlled period is the end game. During this time, robots may continue scoring stones, but there are also ways to earn bonus points. Placing a capstone on a skyscraper will earn a five point bonus, plus one point for each level of stones. If a robot moves their foundation completely out of the building site, their alliance earns 15 points. An alliance will earn an additional five points for each robot parked in the building site. So that's kind of the game. Each year it changes and um, as you see, it's kind of complex, but that just kind of brings us right to our next slide, if I do that. So the engineering design process. So as you saw, the game is kind of complicated and there's a lot of different parts and they all kind of work together. So I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with the engineering design process, but we use that to kind of break down everything we do into different steps, starting with brainstorming and research and prototyping and then ending with testing and improvement. So unlike other sports, our season isn't so much a straight line, but more of a circle. We're constantly going back, improving, researching, and testing as we go along. Yeah, and after we like do this like initial brainstorming, obviously the first step is to um, design everything. Uh, we call it CAD, which stands for Computer Aided Design. It's basically just a fancy way of saying modeling something on the computer. So basically what we use, we use a program called Autodesk Fusion 360 to basically like design everything, design every part, put them all together and see how they fit. The way for us to actually make the parts in real life, we have two different ways. We can make the parts using 3D printing technology or with metal. We have three 3D printers at our uh, workshop and they allow us to print complex parts with plastic, making us able to make angles, curves, straight lines, circles, whatever you want. We also have the, the Tormac PCNC machine 1100, which allows us to make complex metal parts. With this machine, we're able to create parts as seen on the left of the screen that, can no, that cannot be made um, with regular bandsaw technology. Everybody on the team has to learn how to build for their general knowledge and their skills. We build our robot together as a team and we use a different a variety of tools and materials to create a functioning robot. Throughout the whole building designing process, we're also programming and testing the robot constantly to make sure that it works as best as possible in both the autonomous and driver-controlled modes. A part of robotics is documentation, which involves writing down everything we do of everything we do in order to build our robot. This is important so we could show the judges that we actually built our robot and we can go back and see our past designs in progress. Another important aspect of robotics is outreach. We, a big mission of Suffering Robotics is to educate the community about the joys of engineering. So you'll often see us at many community events such as the street fair or the STEAM Expo and stuff like that. 
We also go to many different engineering firms in order to teach ourselves more about engineering. So as you could see in the top left photo, we went to the UPS headquarters and we also go to many other different engineering firms. Yeah, so basically um, we want everyone to like come in, everyone, like obviously when you join robotics, you don't actually have to have any baseline knowledge, but we want to give everyone like the opportunity to get this knowledge before they come in in September. So basically um, uh, we have two different um, summer challenges for you guys to do. You can choose either one, you can either do the CAD one or the programming one. So for the CAD one, we want you to use uh, Fusion 360 to like design a fidget spinner. So it's a, you all guys don't know what a fidget spinner is and be doing it can just like Google it. Basically, this is like just to get you a baseline knowledge of how to design something, how to work in a 3D space. And then also if uh, Fusion isn't working on your computer or like your computer is not working, you can always just draw it on a piece of paper. And then if you want to do the programming one, all you need to do is either using Android Studio, which is the program we use to code in, or Scratch, which is like a block-based uh, online program to like make a simple calculator. And you can base this is like um, just a way for you guys to learn. Um, so don't be afraid to ask us for help or like look up like tutorials online. It's like to like help you guys like figure out how to do some research and like how to solve problems. Yes. Yeah, so just what Jason said, a huge part of robotics is facing unknown challenges and figuring out ways to solve them. And sometimes they're challenges we've dealt with before. So we can go back and see what we did previously, but sometimes they're completely new when we have to do research. So a big part of this is going online, researching. I know there's tons of videos out there that teach you how to use Android Studio, Scratch, or how to design and 3D model. So those are, we're totally fine with you using anything available on the internet or previous knowledge. But as Jason said, we're here if you get stuck. And if you have any other questions, feel free to use the email that was provided in the flyer. I can also, I'll probably put it on screen and post. So if you have any questions over the summer about anything, the summer challenge or robotics related, you could do that. You can email that email and also attach to wherever you're watching this video. So YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, wherever you're watching this, um, there should be a link to a Google form. We're just asking that you please fill it out. This way we can get in contact with you since as you know, things are a little bit wonky in terms of scheduling due to coronavirus. So if we have any new information regarding the season, meetings, or anything like that, we'll be sure to send you an email. So that's just why we need that information. And I think that's pretty much everything. And we hope to see you guys in September. Hope to see everyone there.